Before we start this video, we're going to go over a few basic terms, uh, starting with the axon bulb, and then going to the vesicles, and then the neurotransmitters, the semantic cleft, and that all makes up the neuromuscular junction, which leads to the sarcolemma, to the T-tubule, and then the sarcoplasmic reticulum, the calcium ions, and the sarcoplasm. Skeletal muscles will contract or relax when they receive electrical signals via action potentials from the nervous system. A neuromuscular junction is the site of the signal exchange. This is where the synaptic bulb of an axon terminal and muscle fiber connect. An electrical signal, is also known as an action potential, is conveyed down the axon of a somatic neuron so to the axon bulb which is located within the axon terminal. Chemical signaling occurs when the neurotransmitter molecule release is stimulated by the action potential transmission, causing the vesicles within the axon bulb to expel neurotransmitters. In this case, we have acetylcholine into the synapse or synaptic cleft where it will then bind with the ion channel receptors on the sarcolemma or the membrane of the myofibril. The binding action of acetylcholine neurotransmitter to the receptor causes the receptors to open, allowing sodium ions, which are highly concentrated on the outside of the myofibril, to flow inside, depolarizing the sarcolemma. As sodium ions enter, voltage-gated channels open, regenerating another action potential. The sarcolemma will then convey this electrical signal along its length, where it will then be able to propagate down the T-tubule. ATP binds to myosin and hydrolysis occurs, pulling back the myosin head into an extended high energy position, leaving byproducts of ADP and inorganic phosphate. Calcium ions are then released from the sarcoplasmic reticulum, binding to the troponin on the thin filament, causing the tropomyosin adjust in, shape, on, in its shape and expose the binding site on the actin. The extended myosin head will then bind to an exposed active site on the actin, forming a cross bridge. The myosin head moves to a low energy state when the ADP and the phosphate are used up. Still attached to the actin, it causes a movement called a power stroke. ATP is then reintroduced to the binding site and breaks the cross bridge between myosin and actin. The leftover ADP and phosphate are then recycled and the process repeats. Mortis frequently occurs, which causes a body's joints to become stiff and immovable. Rigor mortis occurs because the sarcoplasmic reticulum becomes completely permeable and all the calcium ions rush out of the sarcoplasm. These ions bond to the troponin, which then moves to tropomyosin. This exposes the actin and allows the myosin to bind with the actin using the leftover ATP. Because this little buddy died, ATP is no longer produced within the body and the ATP left in the body is in short supply. There's not enough molecules to break the bonds between actin and myosin, leaving all the muscles in a contracted position. Having the muscles in a contracted position results in an overall stiffness in the joints, which is known as rigor mortis.